Here's Kepler's second law. Another thing he noticed is the radius vector from the sun to the planet sweeps equal area in equal time. Kepler's second law. So for a circle, circular, if we imagine a circular orbit, I think that's pretty clear that's what's going to happen. If your planet is here, say the sun is here, right? you point some delta t, the planet's got some speed, it's going to end up here, say. And if you pick two other times, so and then you would, this is the area Kepler is referring to. So and this is delta t, say. If you pick two other times, say here, and weighted the same delta t here, you'll get the same area. And the reason is we know for simple circular motion, the speed is constant. So the speed you get from, if you have a constant uh, centripetal force, then there's no reason the speed would change, and therefore you sweep the same area. But what's a little bit different is if you have an ellipse, right? So let's draw our elliptical orbit again, highly elliptical orbit. Let's put the sun over here at a focus. And then you can see that uh, if you had the planet uh, here, say, well, how about there, and you weighted delta t, and then it went here, that's a really big area. So if you said it's going the same speed the whole time, it's just going to go a much, uh, a much smaller area here. Right? So it doesn't quite work out. So what you have to have is that the speed changes. Changes um, around the ellipse. So if it's here, this an, an equal area, an equal um, uh, area would need to look something like that because it's so much shorter, right? This has all this length here and here. That means that it's going slow when it's out here, when there's a very long radius for it to create an area, and it's going very fast when it's around here. And this is what, what he observed, is that they go slow and they speed up as they go around in a way that the area stays constant. So this is something we can actually confirm by realizing that it conserves angular momentum. So let's apply our modern understanding and see if we can show that this has to be true. Um, let's see. So why does it conserve angular momentum? Because Fg creates no torque. Well, why is that? Well, let's look at a case. So here is the planet. Here's the sun. Right, The axis, the rotation is here. It's rotating around the sun, and the force of gravity is there. So it creates no torque because the force, by definition, always lies along this axis between the planet and the point of rotation. So it's not going to, uh, so the cross product will be the sine of 180 degrees will be zero. So there's no cross product, so there's no torque. So Fg creates no torque, so dl dt is zero, therefore the angular momentum has to be constant. Okay, so if it's already moving then, uh, let's figure out what it is. Let's see, so, um, uh, yeah, L is constant. So let's look at this thing here. So if we have this vector here, this is R, right, R, and then this is uh, dr, like that. And we want to figure out this area here, right? That's a little kind of like a triangle, right? But we could also add in this vector. You could put the dr down here and the r up there. So I've offset this r. I'm just offsetting it here and this here. We could also look at the area of that parallelogram. And it turns out cross products are the area of a parallel parallelogram. We've never, in this class, talked about the geometrical interpretation. But if you have a cross b, and there's a, and there's b, the magnitude is actually equal to the area of that par parallelogram if you draw B again here and A again there. So we're going to use that idea here. We're going to realize that the area is equal to a half of the parallelogram 
of R cross dr. Um, and then we're going to say, wait a minute, dr is proportional to the velocity, right? So dr dt is the velocity. So we could say is 1 half of r cross uh, v if we multiply it by dt, right? Because this is dr over dt times dt. It kind of works out. We're not doing this real formal right? like that. And then what else could we say? Well, r cross v doesn't help us, but r cross p helps us, right? So why don't we say this? It's equal to 1 half r cross p uh, if we multiply this by m. So we have to do it 1 over m. So we have, now we have a dt over m here. OK. And what is r cross p? The angular momentum. So we have 1 half. Um, uh, we have an m in the bottom, we have the angular momentum up here, and we have a dt here. And this whole thing was this area that it sweeps, which we could call dA. So we have dA is the angular momentum over 2m dt. Oh, bring the dt under here. And then we get this thing that Kepler was talking about. dA dt is just L over 2m. And we know that the angular momentum is constant right? because there's no external torque. So this, this dA dt is constant. So you, then you can do some geometry to figure out how fast is it going here, how fast is it going here, what's the ratio that it speeds up based on the eccentricity, etc. But his basic idea was very closely related to conservation of angular momentum. He just didn't know what that was yet.